Looking to convert your book into an audiobook? eAudio Productions is the premier destination for audiobook productions. We combine the finest performances of our world class narrators with the production skills of our studio experts, bringing you the highest quality audiobook productions in the industry. From manuscript to a fully produced and published audiobook, eAudio Productions is the best choice for authors and publishers. Contact us today for a free consultation. Visit us at eAudioProductions.com. You're listening to the Author Inside You podcast, a weekly podcast designed to motivate you to finish writing a book, choose a publisher, and build an audience. Keep listening if you're looking to get propelled into the next chapter of your life. And now, it's the Author Inside You podcast. Hello, I'm Matt Rafferty. And I'm Leah Rafferty. Joining us today is David Meyer, author of The Investor Protector, where he shares the stories of good people enduring unthinkable financial loss. David is the managing principal of Meyer Wilson, a national law firm he founded to represent investment fraud victims in their fight against deceptive brokers. Welcome, David. Thanks for joining us today. I'm glad to be here. Thank you. Well, David, I understand when you were 28, you had a case that led you to start your firm? Yes. I like to say I uh, I peaked early. I had a big case <laughs> uh, that was referred to me. I was not, at the time, I was not an investment fraud lawyer. I was actually a tax lawyer. Um, I don't have a traditional uh, path to practicing law, I don't think, but I was a a tax lawyer at the time. I got my master's in tax law after my law degree, and I was hired to be a tax lawyer. I didn't really love it. So I was looking for other things to do. And a, a gentleman walked into my law office. He wasn't referred to me because I was 28 and no one was referring anybody to me at that point in my career. And uh, it was this gentleman had a problem with a stockbroker. And my, my bosses at the time weren't interested in the case because they were tax lawyers too and business lawyers. Uh, and I actually, and this, this changed the course of my life. And I was walking to the restroom and I ran into this gentleman, literally ran into him in the hallway. And I just talked to him and I asked him you know, who he was and what he was here for. And he told me, as a, I got a problem with my stockbroker and I can't find a lawyer to help me. And I said, well, I'd like to, I'd like to hear what happened. And then I talked to him and I started doing some research. And this was in the beginning ages of the internet. And I started doing some research and found out that he might have a, a decent claim against his brokerage firm. And so I called him back and he said, you know, David, this didn't happen just to only me. This happened to a lot of other people. And I'd like you to meet with my other friends who this happened to. So I got in my very old Honda Accord at the time and drove about an hour up the road. And I walked into a room with 75, 80 people. Wow. Oh my God. I'm like, whoa, <laughs> this is this is uh, this is something. So uh, fast forward, it ended up being a class action. I represented about 250 retirees from a small town outside of Columbus, Ohio called Marion. And uh, the case uh, took about uh, nine years. Uh, but we got a jury verdict of $260 million, which was and still is the largest jury verdict in the state of Ohio. And that's how I started my career as an investment fraud lawyer. And I've been doing this work for 25 years uh, since then. Wow. A home run at your first bet, right? <laughs> yeah. Now, just for anyone doing the math, uh, the Court of Appeals did reduce that verdict uh, substantially. So uh, uh, oh, no, no one collected $275 million, but all my clients recovered all their money plus attorney's fees. So it was a great result, and uh, it really was a highlight in my professional career, and uh, and uh, and I've been doing this kind of work ever since. Well, congratulations on that win. That's pretty exciting. And on the author inside you, we always speak about opportunities, and there was an opportunity that you didn't know what was going to happen, but you spoke to that gentleman just by you speaking to him. Look where it got you. Well, that's true, and I've got uh, kids now who are 19 and 17. In fact, my son, who's 19, was six months old when I left to try that case for six weeks. Um, and, uh, and I tell him the same, uh, same story about the you know, doors open for a lot of people and the difference between some and others are some people have the courage to walk through the doors and some don't, and not every door ends up being, you know, a great opportunity. Um, but, uh, you know, I think oftentimes the difference between success and failure is just taking advantage of opportunities. I believe that hundred percent. Right. Excellent. So let's talk about another opportunity. You writing a book, the investment protector. How did that come about? Well, I say that the book took me 18 months to write, but it was 25 years in the making. So that's a pretty good summary of my book writing experience. 
I never thought that Dave Meyer would, would be an author of a book. My wife was a high school English teacher for a long time, and I can imagine she'd be the one that would be authoring a book. And instead, I wrote the book and she edited it. So um, it, worked out, it worked out pretty well. But um, it, it, it's, now that I've done it, um, I'm really happy I did it. It's, uh, of, of all the things I've done you know, outside my family, it's really the thing I'm most proud of. And, uh, and it's been a great journey. And it's and I'm, you know, I love the opportunity to talk about it, but I'm I, I I'm a big fan of this, and this is coming from somebody who never thought they'd ever write a book. <laughs> so, is the book designed to help people invest? So, there's several purposes of the book. I mean, one reason. So, the book primarily contains stories of of cases I've handled over the past 25 years. I mean, so I, I represent individual investors, mostly retirees, who have uh, claims against their financial advisor who lied, cheated, or stole from them. Mm. Uh, most folks uh, have worked their entire lives and saved up, uh, you know, their life savings, and then entrust it with a broker who, uh, you know, does something wrong and loses all or part of it, and then they come to me to to pursue the recovery of those of those losses. So that's what I do, and I've been doing that, you know, ever since that Prudential case, uh, you know, 25 years ago. And we always talk sort of jokingly in the office because you know we hear a lot of devastating stories, but there's a lot of a lot of things that when we get calls, there's a lot of similarities. A lot of people have the same experiences, and we always talk about how you know it's it's really rewarding to get hired by someone who suffered that that type of situation and comes to us and entrusts us with their case. It's very rewarding to pursue a case and recover money for those folks. But hey, wouldn't it be even better to try to do something to help prevent that from happening in the first place? Right. Mm, so right, by right. the time people are referred to me, the damage has already been done, and you know we do our best to undo that damage, but. We thought by writing a book and telling and sharing our experiences of the stories of, of clients we've helped that we could actually get in front of people and, and have an interesting story to tell because the cases and the stories are, are really riveting, I think. I mean, it's, it's really unbelievable what, what happens to people um, you know, by, by these bad financial advisors. And so we try to I, – I, the idea is we, we share these stories and then people read the stories because they're interesting and they learn a lesson sort of by asking. You know, it's like, <laughs> hey, that was a really interesting book, and now I know what to look out for. So uh, the idea, I mean, there's a lot of reasons I wrote the book, but one primarily is just try to hope that if the people that read this book will never need a lawyer like me. So it's actually a book designed to get me less business. Uh, <laughs> but to so educate people. To educate people. Right. Uh, most folks don't know what to do when they're looking for a financial advisor. Uh, the financial industry is very opaque. I think that's by the nature of Wall Street. Uh, so I try to break it down and help people understand what to look out for, what to do before you hire an investment advisor, and share stories of what I believe is unbelievable triumph, you know, over devastating recovering over devastating losses that our clients have had, and hopefully folks can learn a lesson. Uh, and then, you know, God forbid they're in a situation where they may need an investment fraud lawyer. I, you know, I walk through the steps of what to look for uh, you know, as you're going through the process of of, of hiring a lawyer. Oh, great. Well, was it difficult recalling the stories that were 24, 25 years old? So that's a great question. I've done a lot of interviews. No one's asked me that question. So that, that was a big part. So I started writing. Now, I had been preparing for about six months, but I actually started writing right when COVID hit, just as a coincidence. Uh, so it turned out I had a fair amount of time on my hands because yeah. all the travel stopped. Right. So I have a nationwide practice. So we're on, you know, we're traveling all the time. And obviously all that stopped in March of 2020. Uh, but you know, leading up to that, what we had done is, you know, all the cases of our, of, of our firm are, you know, are in, they're in our system. So we all just worked together. Uh, we got seven lawyers in our office and we all just looked to, we, we, we went through our old files and took out cases that we thought would be most interesting and of most value to people to help them understand how this, how, you know, how they can, what they could, steps they can take to prevent them from, you know, being in this situation. So it was a group effort. We all, you know, we, you know, we cried a little, we laughed a little, we smiled, we reminisced about cases we've all handled. A lot of my people have been with me for a long time. My my intake person has been with me for almost 20 years. So uh, right. we've been through this together. So we've been able, uh, so we really, we pulled out uh, cases, uh, you know, really sort of from the file cabinets, as they, so to speak, right. uh, to pick to pick what we thought would be uh, most appropriate for the book. And you had a team. That's really great. A, a team helping you pick the stories. Yeah, I sort of had a research. <laughs> I sort of had a research team. Uh, at at my law firm, you know, to help me, uh, because the bulk of the book really is of the stories. And, and the, the front of the book, I talk a little bit about my background and some history, just so folks can you know get to know me and how I got from there to here. 
Uh, and then we, we talk about the, the securities industry and the difference between an investment advisor and a financial and a, and a stockbroker. But the bulk of it's the stories. And that's what I had a, a lot of help from the team to put together. Well, you seem very personable. So obviously, you are a good storyteller. And that would help writing a book. Well, I think it's, you know, trial lawyers, I mean, we, we tell our clients stories for a living. Okay. Right? Mm-hmm. So we communicate, we persuade, we advocate. That's what we do. So that was the most fun part of the book. Uh, now, the, the, the more difficult part about the editing and the grammar, there, you know, there's a lot that goes into the book, as you, as you both know. Right. Um, and again, my wife helped me tremendously. And I don't think she really signed up for that, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, you know, but it turned out uh, as uh, she spent uh, the week of spring break uh, last year uh, reviewing my book for the for the hundredth time. So uh, <laughs> she was she was a trooper. Uh, but uh, certainly, you know, being a trial lawyer, an advocate. Uh, it's it's fun, you know, doing that in, in book form rather than standing in front of a jury or an arbitration panel advocating for your client. It's it's very similar in a lot of ways and really gratifying. Oh, great. So what was your writing process like? Did you get up early and write or write on the weekends? So I had, again, I had a lot of time because it was just uh, in the beginning of the pandemic. And I actually took my family and we went away sort of to like a sort of a country house uh, for about three months, right when COVID started. And I, I sat out in the, in the screened-in porch and looking at a uh, nice creek in the mountains. And I spent, oh, I mean, I was, I was writing, writing quite a bit during the day for the first two months of, of COVID. Sort of got in the sway of things. And I had a, we had team meetings and calls with my office about cases. And then I was working very closely with my publisher. Uh, so I, you know, I, I am process-driven and I, I like a schedule. So I, we had it mapped out pretty much. Uh, day to day, week to week, as to what we were going to do, um, and I don't know. A lot of people say this, but the you know the end of the, the the book at the end was quite a bit different than how I envisioned it in the beginning, mm-hmm. and that was just part of the process. Right. Um, but my but, but my publisher warned me that that was uh, not only okay, but that was actually desirable. That would that's a, that's a good result as opposed to whoa, did I screw up? <laughs> uh, so you know, I had a, a lot. Of, I had a lot of great coaching, and that helped as well. You had the publisher going into it before you began writing. Yep. So I, I did a lot of interviewing and a lot of, I talked to a lot of other folks who were similar with, I mean, other professionals uh, who had written books and had a successful experience. I mean, my, my goal was not to sell a, you know, a hundred million books. I mean, I have a day job and, and I'm, I'm perfectly happy with my, with my career and my job. Uh, it really wasn't to make money. I really, there were some there were other primary objectives. So I spoke to other folks who had similar objectives with, you know, writing their book. Um, and I interviewed a lot of different publishing companies. I ended up going with Scribe, uh, and uh, and I had a just, I had a great experience with them uh, from beginning to end. And and they obviously knew what they were doing. And what I loved about them is they had a they had a just a very detailed process. And you know, once I committed to doing it, I just followed the process and I stuck with it. And it uh, it worked out you know really well in my opinion. Great. So you pick Scribe Media. How was the process working with them? What was that like? So they, they assign you what someone that I would, I would call a coach. I think it's actually a, a scribe is what they call it. And uh, you know, they, they have a lot of interviews, you know, uh, term, trying to determine, you know, why do you want your, who, who you're writing a book for, who's the target, uh, what's the purpose, and sort of a North Star analysis. Um, and that's really what, what just kind of changed over the course of three or four months. And, and this was all like, in the past, it took about three or four months of doing this before I actually started writing. Uh, but they help you with, you know, your, who's your target, uh, who's your you know primary target, your secondary target. And then, <laughs> Sounds and very then, thorough. Wow. <laughs> oh, yeah. It was unbelievably detailed. And, and, and they held you accountable. Uh, you know, a lot of people, there's, there's talkers and there's doers. And my guess is a lot of people <laughs> talk about writing a book, but, oh, very few <laughs> of us, but, very, but very few of us actually do it. And it helps to have, you know, somebody holding you accountable. And that's what, out of all the benefits of Scribe, and they did a, I mean, they, they helped me with the design cover, the picture, and and, and, and there's, you know, from soup to nuts, they, they really helped me all, along the way. And even the, the public, the promotion of the book, uh, was oh, actually fantastic. one of their, one of their stronger, uh, benefits really from the, and I didn't even realize that was kind of part of the, part of the arrangement, but they were really good at that too. And it just helping with dealing with Amazon and how to get the book out there. I mean, you know, I'm a lawyer, I don't know how to do any of that, <laughs> right. uh, but they have a great process and a structure, um, and they hold you accountable and, you know, there's a commitment obviously financially and, and, of time and resources. And so I, I, once I committed to it and stick with it and I followed, I followed the process, followed the recipe, um, <laughs> and, and they kept me accountable and that's what, that's what got me through it. 
Excellent. So we've heard lots of good things about Scribe Media. Um, like they have free resources on their webpage, like an ebook called uh, The Best Way to Write and Publish Your Nonfiction Book. And so, you know, for more information about Scribe Media, you can go to the authorinsideyou.com slash publish, and we'll have a link there in case anybody's interested in doing that. So tell us about how they helped you with the promotion of your book. The best part about it is they started talking about promotion before I was even done with it. And I kept okay. thinking, wait a minute, what if my book sucks? <laughs> you know, what if nobody wants to read this thing? What if I don't right. want to read it? Uh, but the, so the, they were so proactive and it's a whole different division. So while I'm working with my scribe and my publisher and the design team and the, and the, and, and all the, and the, what's going to go on the front cover, what's going to go on the back cover and the pre-publishing reviews. I mean, before, while you're doing all that, and still, I mean, I was still muscling through the content of the book and revisions. Then I got connected with you know someone in the promotion department, and they have. I mean, it's like a it's an unbelievably detailed process. Uh, I mean, it's something like the nine week process, and they have a fancy name for it. But I mean, it, my book published uh, June, uh, I think June tenth of two thousand and and twenty one, and we started the public the promotion process like 10 weeks before that. Um, and, and, and you have calls, you have calls with them every week. Uh, there's, you know, their Google shared page and, and they help you with um, all the social media promotion. I mean, they had images and they had uh, cutouts of my book with quotes. Um, and, you know, they would send me pr- emails to send to my contacts to help promote it. I mean, it was, it's really unbelievable. And I didn't even have, I didn't have any idea this was even part of the deal um, <laughs> because I just wanted to, I never thought I'd actually get through finishing and actually publishing it. But then, and then the best part is they send you and as part of the deal, you get like 50 copies or whatever. So I didn't know it was actually already done and a big box came to our office uh, and I opened it up and it was 50 hard copy wow. books. And it's just, I mean, I've, I've had a pretty charmed career and a pretty charmed life and uh, I think my high point, you know, professionally certainly was <laughs> open up a box and see on 50 books, hardcover books with your name on it. Right. Yeah, um, cool. It was, yeah. it was, it was pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> I bet that was a great day. And for everyone in your office too. Yeah. I mean, it was, this was a team effort and I acknowledged everyone in the book, uh, you know, th- you know th- that was a big part of it. it was, oh yeah. This was, this was a team effort and a family effort. Uh, but I will say one of the most rewarding things about this book, and I didn't even anticipate this the, the advanced copy came out and i have two examples that i thought really just solidified i'm so glad i did this one is so i have a 19 year old son and a 17 year old daughter and i i bring a copy home and i just put it you know on the counter and you know everyone laughed and we smiled and we laughed and we might have cried a little whatever but then that, like two days later it was a weekend i walked downstairs and my 17 year old daughter uh was uh, well she had her phone in one hand but then she had her my book in the oh, other hand wow. and and she was reading and I said, wow, are you, you know, you're reading my book. And she said that, and she was like, so the first chapter or two was really sort of about my background and how I got started. And of course she wasn't alive, you know, or just a baby, you know, as I started my firm, you know, 15, 20 years ago. And she said, David, I, or dad, David, dad, I had no idea that this, this was how you got started or that you did this. I didn't know anything about that. I'm like, you know what, this whole process was, was worth it just for that. Just to have yeah. something in writing right. that my kids can read, and, and as and as they get older, hopefully they'll maybe they'll read all of it. You know, who knows? Yeah. <laughs> and they but, can show uh, their grandchildren. Just, yeah, just having that, and then of course my dad and my mom and my stepmom are are fortunately still alive, and so they were uh, you know obviously very proud, uh, and I was happy to be able to publish the book while they were still you know able to enjoy it. So that that was a high point, and I didn't even really uh, think about all that when I was thinking about writing a book. That wasn't really part of you know. The, the reason why I did it, but it was, it's been a benefit that I just didn't even expect. Right. So we touched a little bit about how you did 10 weeks of pre promotion of the book, you know, um, emails and social media. What happened after the book was published? Are you continuing to do that? Oh yeah. So, uh, I, I'm still doing it. I still do. I do podcast interviews. Uh, I've, I've done a, a lot of blog uh, guest blogging, uh, the, the book, I was fortunate enough it reached number one, it reached number one bestseller status on Amazon. Wow. Uh, Congratulations. Which, which, uh, thank you. Which, uh, which was really excited to hear that. And, and, it, and it's just, and, and I've, I've had people call me and, and thank me for writing the book and say that they've made, they've made decisions with their broker. Uh, they've changed brokers because of things that, that I've, that they've read in my book and they've made, you know, decisions in their financial lives as a result of reading that book. And so that's extremely rewarding. 
Well, can you give us a little tip, a uh, snippet of how someone who might be working with a financial advisor, how they could tell if maybe they might be a victim of fraud? Well, so I'll give you the best piece of advice, and this doesn't cost anything. Okay. And it's the easiest thing that everybody who's ever, who, anyone who's working with a financial advisor or who has a family member that's working with a financial advisor or considering working with a financial advisor, everyone should look up their broker and you could do it for free on the internet, on your couch, wearing your pajamas, and it doesn't cost anything, and it, and it takes five minutes. And that's by going to brokercheck.org, and that's a website that's run by the federal securities regulators. It's free of charge to the public, and it has a database of every stockbroker and financial advisor in the country. And it's the only industry, only profession I'm aware of, where you can look up uh, someone that you might choose to work with and learn about them. Uh, you know, before you hire them, you can't do that for lawyers. You can't do that for doctors. You can't do that for architects, but you can do it for uh, brokers. So you, you go to bro- brokercheck.org and you can type in the name of the broker and the name of the brokerage firm, and it'll pull up their record. It'll tell you, you know, when they got licensed, uh, where they work. So it has their employment history. It'll indicate if they've had any prior complaints by customers. It'll indicate if they've had any regulatory disclosures. It's an invaluable uh, resource. And I will tell you, if you do this, if everyone did this before they hired their broker, uh, then the amount of cases that a firm like mine would see would go down by 75%. Wow. <laughs> That's how valuable. Now, it's not perfect. And I have to, the disclaimer is, unfortunately, it's not 100% accurate. There are ways that Wall Street and brokers can, uh, you know, kind of uh, play the system and get things ex- expunged or erased. So it's not a perfect system. It's not 100% accurate. But it's the best resource available for individual investors, retirement savers, I call them, uh, who are considering hiring somebody. Uh, It it has prior complaints. It has employment history, identifies where the the broker works or where they did work. Um, and you know, it's a lot of information. It's a lot of it. And it's totally free. And you could do it, search it over and over again. And again, I've had several people call, call me and say, hey, they, they did this research. And as a result of what they found, they found their broker had two or three complaints. Oh. They, they mentioned it to their broker. They didn't get a satisfactory result. So they switched brokers, which is exactly what they should do. Great. Um, and, yeah, so everybody, you should do this. As soon as we're done with this interview, you should go online and look up your financial advisor and your parents should and your yep. cousin, everybody that you care about, you should. And it, it's a great resource. Again, it's not 100% accurate. But it's the best thing everyone can do uh, before hiring a broker to make sure that you only only entrust your money with someone who's licensed to sell securities and is associated with a, a, a decent sized uh, firm. Excellent. And what's that web page again? It's brokercheck.org. Excellent. We'll put it in the show notes so you can scroll down and see that if you happen to be driving or walking right now. Well, David, tell us a little bit about the cover, your book cover. Were you able to have a say in it? So Scribe also helped me with the title and the book cover uh, design. So we went through, I mean, many different variations of, of titles. So there was an article about me about 20 years ago in a uh, local newspaper. And the title of it, I was on the cover of, a, of this magazine. And the, the title said, The Screwed Investor's Lawyer. <laughs> so, oh, okay. you know, everyone, everyone sort of known me as the screwed investor's yeah. lawyer, but depending on, depending on, depending on where you put the uh, apostrophe that could, you know, not read as well. So <laughs> it could be the screwed, you know, investor's yeah. lawyer. So uh-huh. yes. we just, we decided not to go with that and we went with the investor protector, but that was a process. Again, it, it's not as easy. Well, if it sounds hard, it is hard uh, to pick the name of the book is that, you know, that's obviously the name that's going to be there forever. So that took a long time, but they help you with that. And again, as you mentioned, they have videos just on, uh, you know, going through the process of deciding on the title of your book. So there's a lot of help that Scribe provides. And then there's a whole nother department on images and book covers. So book cover design was a whole nother part of the process wow. with Scribe. <laughs> um, so we had all kinds of different pictures and yeah, I mean the design, the layout, it's it's all very organized and process driven to scribe. Excellent. From what I hear, it looks like your life, I'm sure you've had ups and downs, but it seems like a lot of things fell into place. What has been your biggest challenge that you had to overcome? And that could be with writing the book or anything. Probably the biggest challenge, you know, professionally was that that I started my law firm. I didn't have uh, you know, any family connections. I didn't have any business connections. I was brand new to the city and the state where I lived. And, uh, and it's, uh, you know, I was, I was fortunate enough to have a lot of things, you know, fall in my favor, but 
the challenge of, of starting any business. I mean, whether it's a law firm or anything, uh, you know, just from the from ground zero, I didn't have any money. My wife was a high school teacher. We were fortunate enough to live off her off her salary as I was starting my law firm. So I had a, a, a lot of great friends and mentors, but uh, it, that was that's the most challenging thing I've done certainly uh, over my career. Wonderful, and it is something to say about people who take risks and people who don't. You had to take a risk by just living on your wife's salary, and you didn't know what was going to happen, and then woof, off you go. That's true. That's and it true. can be that way with writing a book too. It could be a risk, and then poof, there it goes, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I, you know, I will I will say it's writing this book has been one of the most rewarding things I've ever done. So for your listeners out there, you know, if if they've thought about writing the book, I, I think a lot of people think about it and most people don't do it. Right. And I, I think that's right. true for a lot of things. A lot of mm-hmm. people think about changing jobs or, you know, getting out of a bad relationship or, you know, a lot of things, but many of us just, we, you know, we, we can't, we, we don't want to change with inertia. Uh, it's scary. It's risky. Um, you know, a lot of us are nervous about the unknown. I mean, those are all legitimate concerns. Uh, but if you're serious about uh, wanting to write a book, hiring a, a professional a publisher or some company, a coach that could, that has experience doing this, I mean, there's there's a lot of help out there. And a lot of it's just getting some direction and some coaching and some accountability uh, and, and really helping you shape what the topics would be and, and who your target is. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of good help. And we, I've been talking just, you know, anecdotally around my law firm for, for 10 or 15 years about writing a book like this. Uh, but once I committed to it and found the best partner, it really came together. Right. That's some great advice. Normally we ask for advice at this point in the show, but I think that was some great advice that you gave anybody who was listening. Very good. All right. It's fun to hear your passion, your voice. Tell us now, where can we purchase your book? So my book is available on Amazon. So if you go to Amazon and you type in the Investor Protector, uh, you'll see it there and you can get hardcover or soft, softbound or ebook. I don't have the audio, the audible version yet because I'm not sure anyone wants to hear me uh, read the book, read my book to them. <laughs> uh, so other than the audio book, it's all available on Amazon. Excellent. That's fantastic. Well, David Meyer, thank you very much for being a guest on the Author Inside You podcast today. It's my pleasure. I enjoyed the time with both of you. Thank you. I found David's story very interesting. And if you did too, reach out to us. We'd love to hear from you. Find our contact information at theauthorinsideyou.com. And until next time, right on. Thank you for listening to the Author Inside You podcast with your host, Leah and Matt Rafferty.